Let's do this. Keep everyone alive. Holy jeez. The Nine Ring Broadsword. The Nine Ring Broadsword is a variant on the Chinese Dao from the Qing Dynasty that was used through the 1930s. Featuring a blade wider than a traditional Dao and a curve towards the tip, the weapon was ideal for chopping and could sever a head with a single swing. The rings on the back of the blade serve dual purposes, for ornamentation used during ceremonies or martial arts displays, and for superstitious reasons, as it was believed the jingling sound would ward off evil spirits. This deadly and sacred sword can be seen on the television show Into the Badlands. Bladesmiths, you have our gratitude. Gentlemen, your swords look magnificent. But are they deadly? To find that out, we will take your swords and deliver some killing blows on this pig carcass. It's all about the kill in this particular test. Burton, you are first. Are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Right, Burton, first up, what I love about this blade was the balance, the way I was able to move with the blade everywhere. Now let's talk about the breakage. Okay. So the break happened right there where the ring was attached. You can see it's really not a bad core scrutcher you have there. It could be finer, but rings, when you're digging into that, could cause stress risers. And it broke right there where the ring was. Well, gentlemen, the fight's not over because, Mike, your blade still has to survive nine strikes on its kill test target. Good luck, gentlemen. Doug? If I make it through nine strikes on this pig, I'm forged and fire champion. My palms are sweating. I'm so scared that this thing's going to break on the first swing. Burton, unfortunately, your blade broke and can no longer continue with testing. And for that reason, I have to dismiss you from the forge. Dude, good job, brother. I appreciate it, man. It sucks. Damn, man. Gorgeous weapon. Huh? Thank you, man. Seeing my blade break, uh, it's a disappointment. You know, when you make it to round three, you want to win. You know, the nine holes burnt through four drill bits doing them. So somewhere through there, I probably was given a little too much pressure and caused the stress riser to run down that blade. That was enough to cause a critical failure in that blade. I'm still proud of myself with what I've done. You know, it was uh, way out of my wheelhouse. Uh, what's next for me is not swords, especially any nine ring swords. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Mike, congratulations. The strength and integrity of your blade has made you a Forged in Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. That one Forged in Fire. Holy crap, man. Come on forward and shake our hands, my thank friend. You, thank you. Good job, brother. Thank you. So some of the things that went wrong in my home forge, I was really sure that that blade was going to break on me. Da -da 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 -da. 
There's a happy dance. Do it again. The Toreg Tacoba. The Tacoba is a type of broadsword that has been used by the nomadic Toreg people of North Africa since the 14th century. This double-edged lightweight blade was carried for self-defense on long journeys, designed to deliver lethal slashes and stabs against a rival warrior. Due to the Toreg's aversion to iron, there is no exposed steel or iron on the hilt of this sword, so it cannot touch the user's hand. Measuring more than a meter long, this deadly weapon was seen as a symbol of wealth. Some members of the Tacoba clan still carry this weapon today. Bladesmiths, welcome to the keel test. Your Turek Tacobas look beautiful, but the kind of beauty I'm looking for is the lethal kind. And we'll take your weapon, deliver some lethal blows on this ballistic stubby. Dustin, you're up first. Ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Dustin, let's talk about your weapon here. First up, your handle construction. I like the ovoid feel of this. The flare you have there in your pommel actually gives great retention for this. Your tip is sharp enough to penetrate. Your edges are sharp when you're cutting out, and you can wield this to do that kind of damage on this bullock's dummy. Overall, sir, a weapon like this, it will kill. Awesome. All right, Joshua, your turn. You ready? Keep everyone alive. All right, let's do this. All right, Joshua, let's talk about your weapon here. Your pommel right here could have used some weight to it, but because it's forward weighted and the fact that you have a very sharp edge, every slice, as you can see, is very deep into the ballistic dummy. And more importantly, sir, your weapon, you will kill. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. Our desert well chop. Now to test the strength and overall construction of your blades, I will be chopping into our well house, as well as the well. And Dustin, you're on deck, you ready? I guess so. <laughs> okay. All right, we were doing so well for a moment there. What actually happened was with insetting your blade down into this piece of wood, any of that leverage was just too much for the wood itself and it popped it loose. Your tang is a little bit small, but what I do like to see is that your blade actually held up beautifully. I mean, your grain structure looks fine. This is an absolutely brutal test. So very well done. Thank you. Now, Dustin, you survived every one of the strikes except for the last one. Your guard gave way, and your blade followed. So we consider this a catastrophic failure. You cannot continue testing your blade, but you're not out of the fight yet. How are you feeling, Joshua? Pressure's on. All right, so you need to survive five strikes in order to be named Forged and Fire Champion. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. Oh, 
Well, Joshua, your blade is strong. It made it past all the strikes. Congratulations. Now, Dustin, unfortunately for you, that means your time here in this competition has ended because you did have a catastrophic failure. It was an honor watching you in our forge, but unfortunately, man, at this time, I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off our forge floor. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I'm definitely crushed. I actually thought that recessing the sword into the tang a little bit would make it stronger, and that kind of would bit me in the end, so definitely, definitely won't be doing that again. I'm definitely proud of this blade. I came here to challenge myself as much as I could, and I definitely achieved that. Well, Joshua, congratulations, man. That means you are the newest Forge of Fire champion. You just got yourself a check for $10,000. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah! Oh, my gosh, I made a sword. It didn't break. Oh, my gosh. It was a hard competition, so this is unreal. <laughs> the Polish Carabella. One of Europe's most iconic sabers, the Carabella was a sidearm of history's most fearsome cavalry, the winged hussars. These 17th century warriors, famed for their feathered armor and sophisticated attack formations, brandished the sword on horseback when closing in on the enemy. The saber's light curved blades slashed easily through enemy armor. Its hilt often included fixtures that improved grip and recovery, like a thumb ring, chain guard, or curved eagle head pommel. The Carabella was so effective at helping the Hussars defeat enemy armies much larger in size that it became a symbol of prestige worn by Polish-Lithuanian nobility at formal events. Its legacy lives on in the video game series, Witcher. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test to see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do. I will take your weapon, deliver some slashes and thrust on this pig carcass. Ethan, you're up first. You ready? I am so ready. First up, there are no issues whatsoever with your edge over here. It is sharp. It lacerates and cuts cleanly. Look at that. Razor cuts right there. On the thrust, you have an angle here that allowed for a deep thrust, pulling out and slashing on the way out. Overall, your weapon will kill. All right, Liam, your turn. You ready? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. So many things can go wrong. I don't even know if I was able to get a good, solid temper on this blade. Well, Liam, let me say this. First up, your presence here is a victory. All the things that you went through, and you still turn in a blade that's beautiful in craftsmanship, that is very sharp, but your blade did break. And you can see right here in the cross section, there's a discoloration down here. So something happened in your heat treating process. It may have micro fractures. It is what it is. Liam, there was a flaw in your blade that led to a catastrophic blade failure, and we can no longer continue with testing. For that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm upset. Sometimes the best you can do isn't going to be enough, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't still try. Ethan, this is a competition where the best blade wins, and you, sir, are a new Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check $10,000, good job. I really would have liked to have seen both of those go all the way through testing, but I'm very proud of the work I did. I'm now a Forge and Fire champion. <laughs> Attila the Huns, Sword of Mars. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
known as the Scourge of God, Attila the Hun was one of the most feared conquerors in history. The leader of the Hunnic Empire, his group of nomadic tribes wreaked havoc across Europe during the fifth century. Though he was once a great ally to them, he plagued Roman territories, sacking major cities like Constantinople. Legend states that Attila was given the Sword of Mars by a herdsman, fulfilling a prophecy and a direct sign from the Roman war god Mars of his divine rule. The lethal weapon featured a curved handle with a spear point tip that gave it exceptional control, allowing for accurate and brutal thrust. After Attila's death in the year 453, the Hunnic Empire quickly dissolved. However, the story of Attila's many conquests still live on through the television miniseries, Attila. All right, Bladesmiths, to find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will deliver killing blows on this ballistics dummy. Randy, you're up first, you ready? I am. Let's do this. All right, Randy, let's talk about your Sword of Mars here. First up, the Damascus pattern you have here is gorgeous. Thank you. The weapon design is very aggressive for thrusting and slashing. Now your handle construction. If you reverse this, it'll be easier to have something to lock onto. The fact that the flare is right here, forcing my hand to open up if I want to marry into the hilt. This is a very sharp weapon. The tip pierces all the way through, cuts on the way out. It's pointy and scary and it will kill. Thank you. Good job. All right, Dan, it is your turn. You ready? Hell yeah. Let's do this. I was hoping the kill test would be a dummy. I know heads will roll. All right, Dan, let's talk about your weapon here. I love the balance of your blade. When I go forward, it's not hard to pull back to go in again for another kill. Now your handle construction. It's curved enough to where it doesn't want to fly out of my hand. It's got a good grip and control for this. Your edge allows for very deep cuts into the abdomen right there. The only issue we have is that your tip picked up a bend when it's chopped into the spine. But your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. Now, Attila's armies were basically one large cavalry. And through his military campaigns, he revolutionized the use of horse in military conflicts. So to test the strength and durability of your blades, I'll be chopping into these horse skulls. Randy, you're up first. Are you ready? I guess so. Okay, so right off the bat, the biggest thing is that this section from right about here to here has lost its edge. There's a couple of small rolls. Blade's still straight, it's all in one piece, still solid. Nicely done, it's a very strong blade. Thank you. All right, Dan, are you ready? No, but let's do <laughs> it. Everybody says that. Okay, so before we get to the obvious, I really like the design of your blade. It's got a great weight to it. Had a really good feel in my hand. The balance was really nice. See all that space around your tang? With that room for that blade to move inside the guard, it could just create so much stress that it cut loose right there at the corner. If it were all tight, there wouldn't be any stress. There's no discoloration here, so it's not that there, were, there was a crack here before. Your grain structure looks fine. It was a well-designed piece, but obvious flaw. Dan, unfortunately, your blade suffered a catastrophic failure in the middle of our strength test. 
which means that we can no longer test it. I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitor's hand, and then please leave the forge. It hurts, but my sword breaking, it's gonna be a reminder that I have to push harder and be better. Randy, the strength and efficiency of your weapon in the kill test have earned you the title of Forged and Fire Champion and a check for how much? $10,000. That's right, $10,000. Good job, brother. I won Forged and Fire. It's reality. How do you feel? Good. To be a <laughs> champion and be recognized as a good bladesmith is uh, real good. This is my happy and excited place. Oh, that's right. Hey, if you didn't recognize it. The Soda Garami. Holy jeez. Oh my god. One of the most intimidating and versatile Japanese pole weapons, the Soto Garami was part of the key arsenal for samurai police during the 17th century. Featuring lethal spikes and hooks, police were able to capture violent offenders from a distance by using the weapon to latch onto the suspects, stopping them in their tracks. Although primarily used in defense, the sharp spikes along with the spiked butt cap made it a menacing and brutal weapon when in combat. Today, the Soto Garame's devastating use can be seen in the HBO television series, Westworld. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your Sodagarami will do, I will take your weapons and stab and try to snag this ballistic dummy. Rita, you're up first. You ready for this? Hi. All right, let's do this. All right, Rita, let's talk about your Sadagarami. The tines you have here penetrates. The hook you have here will rip this person apart. And more importantly, your weapon will kill. All right, Justin, your turn. You ready to have fun? Yes, sir. All right, Justin, the times you have here, it's more of a stabbing time rather than a grabbing. And this is a grabbing weapon, but that hook does grab onto that. Overall, sir, your weapon will kill. All right, Bladesmiths, it's time for the strength test, the dreaded ice block chop. Remember, this is not about what these weapons do to the ice blocks, it's about what those ice blocks do to your weapons. And Rita, you're up first. You get points for theme, I mean. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, Rita, <laughs> got a little bit more of a bend in this one tine here, but everything else is pretty much the way it was going in. Definitely held up, did its job, good job. Thank you. All right, Justin, your turn, you ready? Yes, I am. All right, so 
You survived the strength test. This is a very strong, uh, well-built head for this, but it's built more like a spear than it is for catching. I mean, I'm not sure how effective it would be at snagging the opponent, but uh, it's a devastator. It certainly did the job. Good job. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the sharpness test, the Sandman Pierce and Capture. To test the sharpness, I will take your weapon, Pierce, and try to control this Sandman. Rita, you're up first. You ready for this? Yeah. All right, Rita, the points you have on your tines here definitely penetrate when you thrust into that. But it doesn't slice on the way out or capture as well as it should. Your hook over here did its job. Overall, it will cut and control. All right, Justin, your turn. So you ready? Yes, I am. That's not good. He pulled it out of the socket. Well, Justin, we have a problem. Yes, sir. This wasn't pinned, was it? No. The impact from all these tests loosened it up. And of course, it came off. Justin, you brought in a beautifully crafted weapon. However, you've suffered a catastrophic failure in our final test. And unfortunately, you cannot be our Forge and Fire champion. Congratulations, Rita. Thank you. It's awesome. Beautiful. I come in on Forge and Fire, I put my all into it, and I feel like I made a good weapon, but uh, just came up short on a little bit of the fit and finish. And uh, other than that, I'm happy with it. Rita, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and that is the title that comes with a check for $10,000. Congratulations. How do you feel right now? Come on forward and shake our hands. Good job. <laughs> it's been a very positive and uplifting experience to be able to do something amazing like this. I hope this will help me become an inspiration to kids because I can say, look, if you see something and you want to try it, give it a try. Hey, Weeblows, your scout leader is the new Fortune Fire champion. I'm bringing it home. Can I have a group hug, please? <laughs> Thank you, you guys. Oh, my god.